And the mTOR inhibitors and the initial approval is actually coming in a couple of interesting areas, metastatic renal cell cancer because of their ability to affect angiogenesis and probably some other pathways. Um, and then there's been the recent results for Everolimus or Afinitor in the treatment of neuroendocrine cancer. But we know that uh, blocking more than one pathway is very attractive in breast cancer. We've seen their success in both the combinations of chemo as well as biologic treatments. The mTOR inhibition uh, story seems to be part of a downstream pathway. We think of the PI3 AKT mTOR pathway as being important. We know that there's both mutations that occur in PI3 kinase as well as upregulation and overexpression of PI3 and AKT and then loss of P10. So all of those set up for that pathway to be a driver for breast cancer proliferation. We also know that sitting beside that in some patients we've got the HER2 pathway upregulated or mutated with uh, a driver for, for some cancer patients as well as the hormonal pathways. So if we think about a classic place to, to do dual blockade and to take advantage of the crosstalk on those pathways, bringing an mTOR inhibitor and blocking that PI3AKT mTOR stream really has uh, looked promising preclinically and theoretically. And now we've got clinical trial results that seem to bear out the fact that it's a reasonable place to look to improve treatment.